The Hole in the Horn Buck is officially listed as the second largest non-typical white-tailed deer of all time by the Boone and Crockett Club. The story of the Hole in the Horn Buck goes back to the year 1940 and actually near the Exodus headquarters in Northeast Ohio at the Ravenna Arsenal. The Hole in the Horn Buck was tagged not by a hunter, but rather the buck was discovered by a group of railroad workers who had noticed the dead animal stuck under a nearby chain link fence. Much like some of the other bucks we've covered, the hole in the horn buck was unknown to the public for multiple decades. A shoulder mount of the buck was made by a local taxidermist and hung in the nearby Kent Canadian Club. For almost the next 40 years, the world-class buck was virtually anonymous to the public as it hung on the wall of the private hunting club. But how did the hole in the horn buck get its name? You guessed it, there is a mysterious hole in the drop time of the buck. It was greatly debated for years whether the hole came from a bullet or something else. In 1995, one of the workers named George Winters, who formerly worked at the arsenal where the buck was found, reached out to Gordon Winnington of North American Whitetail with a letter, stating, the hole was thought to be caused from a piece of chain link fence that pierced the antler shortly before it died. At this time, it's the most plausible cause for the unique hole in the drop time, but what's possibly equally as bizarre in this story, it's believed the cause of death for the buck was getting hit by a train. One of the first discoveries I know of the buck hanging in the, the Kent Canadian Club was from Mr. Fred Goodwin, uh, a noted antler collector from Maine. Fred was working up on the Alcan Highway and having been a deer hunter in Maine was flashing pictures of some of the big bucks that he had killed around camp. And one of the other construction workers came forward and said, well, there's a deer back home that he said would make yours look like a fawn. Uh, Fred, of course, didn't believe him. Uh, and he, he told the man, if you, can, if you can provide a picture showing me that this deer that came from back home is, uh, is larger, he said, I'll give you $10. Well, the man sent home for a picture, and lo and behold, the picture came, and it was the hole in the horn buck. Fred couldn't believe his eyes. When Fred left his job with the, on the Alcan Highway, he passed through Ohio for the purpose of, of seeing the deer firsthand. Uh, attempted to buy it at that time, uh, they wanted a tidy sum of $500 for the deer. And Fred said he had never paid more than $25 for a set of antlers and he wasn't about to pay $500 you know, for the hole in the horn buck. Since the buck landed in the hands of a devout antler junkie, the antlers were scored for the first time on August 27, 1983 by Phil Wright, chairman of the Boone and Crockett Scoring Committee. Based upon the initial score of 342 inches, North American Whitetail Magazine declared the buck as the new world record in the December's issue of 1983. In 1986, the hole in the horn buck was remeasured by a judges panel of the official Boone and Crockett scorers. The panel submitted a final score of 328 inches, which placed it as the number two overall non-typical white-tailed deer, falling just short of the 333-inch measurement of the Missouri Monarch buck that was found in 1981 in St. Louis County, Missouri. The Hole in the Horn buck is one of the most famous bucks in the world due to its enormous size, mysterious hole in the right antler, and controversial score. The Hole in the Horn Buck was part of the original legendary Whitetails collection owned by Larry Huffman. Replica mounts of the Hole in the Horn Buck exist in many outdoor retail stores, including Cabela's, Bass Pro Shops, and also one hangs in the front office at Legendary Whitetails Corporate Headquarters. The original set of antlers were purchased with Larry's entire collection of Legendary Whitetails by Bass Pro Shops in 2002. You can find the buck today at the King of Bucks collection in the American National Fish and Wildlife Museum in Springfield, Missouri. But all this begs the question, do you think the buck was killed by a train? Do you think a fence really poked a hole through the antlers right before its eventual death? Will we ever know the definitive truth? Probably not.